Hello there. My name is Mac Horse, and welcome to MacLib 2.0 changelog video. I usually don't make any videos about MacLib. However, in this big update, there were a lot of changes made to GUIs of my mods, so here are the changes made to MacLib's GUI. The dashboard key bind in the screen itself was moved from Blockbuster to MacLib. If you had a custom key bind set, you'd have to rebind it. Beside that, in dashboard, you can use numpered key binds to switch between panels. In MacLib 2.0, all my mod configuration options were removed from Forge's mod options menu, and now they're in mods configuration dashboard panel. MacLib also has many of its own config options. Let's start with personalization options. Primary color option allows to change the color of GUI elements like buttons, trackpad fields, selection boxes and etc. Next, we have background options, which allows to personalize the background. With background color option, you can set up a solid color which will be displayed. Last slider in the color picker affects how opaque or see-through the background is. And with background image pick texture button, you can pick a custom image to be displayed in the background. Make sure to tweak the background colors red, green and blue values to make colors of the image actually appear. Next 4 options allows you to personalize specific GUI elements. Button borders allows you to enable disable black border rendering around some elements, like buttons, color picker and inventory. Check boxes option allows to make new toggle elements appear as a check box, rather than a toggle. Scroll bar options at the bottom allows you to configure the appearance of how scroll bars look. Here you can change back to flat shading, as it was in older versions. Change the thickness of the scroll bar, in case the scroll bar is too thin to grab. And color off scroll bar's shadow. And finally, here is model grid option, which allows to toggle between old grass block underneath the character and model grid, in the model previews. Tutorials options provide very nice features for creating tutorial videos, like this one. Mouse cursor option allows to enable a pixelated mouse cursor, which can be used in case the system cursor isn't visible. For example, when you record with Minima. And keystroke options allows you to enable to show which keys you press on the keyboard, when being in a GUI screen. This is very useful, as you won't have to explain every key you press. You can as well adjust the offset of the keystroke line, how many pixels away from the corner of your screen. And position mode, which lets you pick in which corner the keystrokes line would appear. GUI scale option, allows set a different scale from Minecraft's GUI scale in my mod GUI screens. So, let's say I have my main GUI scale at large. If I go back to MacLib's dashboard, you'd see that even though creative inventory menu is still large, dashboard GUI still appears at normal scale. You can also switch to other scales beside 2 being normal, 1 being small, and 3 being large. If you switch the value to 0, it would use the Minecraft's GUI scale. And finally, max package size option. This option is really difficult to explain, but basically, if you ever get kicked out of a single player world, due to having too many actors and director blocks, big morphs and BB guns, or something similar where the data limit has reached, try adding extra zeros to the end of this option, in another world, and it should fix this issue. Make sure you don't touch this option if you are hosting a public server, as it would make it easier to DDoS your server. Now let's get to actual GUI features. With tab key, when one of the text fields is focused, you can now cycle through all visible text fields on the screen. When you hold shift, you can cycle backward through text fields. You can also unfocus a focused text field by pressing an escape key. Some menus or GUI elements support now context menus. For example, in Creative Morphs menu, you can right click anywhere, and a context menu will appear. 
At the moment, this feature isn't utilized at its full potential. Only creative morphs and entity selectors menu use them. Beside context menus, Maclib's GUIs support keybinds within menus. If you'll press F9 key in any of my mod menus, you'll be able to see a list of all possible keys on the screen. Here are a couple of clips showing me mashing different keys in different GUIs. You already seen these color elements earlier in this video. Basically, with these elements, you can pick a color using either RGB sliders to configure the color, or hexadecimal input field. If you don't know how hexadecimals work, please watch the tutorial linked in the top right corner. It also briefly touches on the subject of how to pick colors with it. Color picker element also supports alpha channel editing for opacity. Trackpad elements were changed as well. Now you can click anywhere on it in order to focus the text field, beside the buttons on the sides. The buttons on the side allow you to increase or decrease value by certain amount, which is usually 1. And finally, the new trackpad GUI element now changes values based on horizontal distance, rather than vertical, and you can still hold shift to amplify value, and hold all to weaken the added value per every pixel away from the original drag. List elements within Maclib were improved as well, and now they support multi-select and drag and drop sorting. In some lists, like Morphabilities list, if you hold shift while clicking on the list element, that would toggle that element while keeping already selected elements in the list. In other lists, like Body Part, Sequencer Morph, or Replay lists, you can drag them, and drop into another place, to change the order in the list. And the final GUI tweak for today is an ability to cycle back in some button elements. In some places, there are buttons like this, which allow to cycle between values. However, before Maclib 2.0, you can cycle only forward. With Maclib 2.0, you can cycle the values backward by right-clicking them. To avoid making an entire video just for one emoticons feature, I decided to put it here. Emoticons now support slim picking in its model rendered as well. In the pose editor, and body part menu, you can click on the blue boxes related to the bone, while holding control, or command key on Mac, to pick that limb. This should save you a lot of time picking those bones. I hope this tutorial will allow you to adapt a new interface much easier, and to use new features. If you can afford, and you'd like to financially support me, there is a Patreon link in the description. Make sure to check out the playlist on the right for updates in my other mods. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.